Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vineyardchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vineyardchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to 757-230-2110. Now here's this week's message. Well, um, we are beginning a new series called Listen. Every year uh, around this time, I try to do something that's associated with relationships, building our relationships, getting better at those. And what's more important than listening? Uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, Sharon and I were on um, the couch. We were both working. I had my laptop. She had her laptop. And she looked like she was pretty engaged in what she was doing. And I wanted to say something to her. So I decided to text her. And uh, she looked at me like, I'm right here, you know. But, you know, we live in a, and, and, and we're hooked up now, right? I mean, we live in a digital age. Every, we use a lot of electronics. Uh, people, you know, more and more are wearing headphones now just because they're connecting with their Bluetooth and their phone. And so you don't really know if they're, you know, if they're, you know, if they want to talk or not. There's no eye contact. Of course, you go to the gym and everybody's hooked up. I mean, more and more, it's, we're just, we might be losing a little bit of the art of conversation. Because, you know, conversation, a big part of that is listening. Listening to what somebody says. They listen to you and you talk and you kind of go back and forth. And, and uh, that, that can get lost in the mix. So we were just going to take four weeks to talk about it. How to become good listeners. How to increase our, our, our ability to listen to other people in our lives that we care about. Look at the verse at the top of your outline. I like this. is in James 1.19. He says, uh, lead with your ears, follow up with your tongues, and let, your, let anger straggle along in the rear. And so what a good verse. You know, it's a, really a theme verse for this series. Lead with our ears. God gave us two ears, right? And one mouth. So we need to remember that proportion. And we lead with our, what is somebody saying? Let, let me hear. And we're going to, so we're going to look at how, the fact that God listens to us, how we can listen to people that are in our lives, people we care about, loved ones, friends, all those. Then we're going to talk about listening to our critics. They might actually have something that has, has some uh, worth, some, some value to us. And then lastly, how to hear from God. And that's important too, obviously. So we're going to listen to those. Number one, uh, God, notice on your outline, God values listening. When you look in the Bible, you see over and over, there's this high value of listening. The word listen and its derivatives are used 338 times in the NIV Bible. 982 times we hear, we see the word hear. And, and, over and above all of those, you just have this word listen all the time. But most of all, you see God on all of those verses, predominantly you see God saying, commanding us to listen. Hey, listen, you need to be a good listener. 
which is one of the reasons why we're talking about it. It's so important over and over. Mark 4.23, for example, he says, if anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. So how many of you have ears? <laughs> okay, it's an easy one, right? But here's the thing, is if you have ears, God is speaking to you. It's just, do you have ears to hear? Are you listening to him? Are you dialing in? Are you saying, I want to hear what God has to say? I'm going to slow down a little bit in order to hear from God. It's a value to me. Luke 18, 8, 18. It says, therefore, consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has will be taken from him. And so you have in this context there, he's saying that, uh, be careful that you listen, not only listen, but you listen carefully because there is repercussions. He says, if you listen carefully, more will be given to you. When, when, you, hear from, when you hear from God, for example, you'll, you, you'll understand him more. You'll, you, more will, he'll speak more clearly to you. That'll increase in your life. And so when you barely understood or heard from God before, now all of a sudden you're hearing from him more. So, so this incre- but he goes, the reverse happens too. When we're not listening, the little we thought we had can slip outside of our fingers. And so the stakes are real high. Now, who should we listen to? The most important person for you to listen to, guys, is your wife. No, I'm just kidding. It's, she's number two. God is number one. So, but it is important to listen to to, to God, and, and it's important to listen to people around us. I mean, there's, there's certain people we want to really tune into, and the Bible talks about that. And, and, and when we're talking about people in our lives, we need to really do what it takes to listen to people that we care about. Listening is, is a skill. It's something that you take time out. You have to really focus. You, it, sometimes I think we take it for granted. And we don't really pay attention, and we let our little devices sometimes get in the way. Well, there's a lack of listening going on now. Even though the other person says, oh, I'm here, I'm here. So that's something I think we can grow and we'll look at that next week. And then we're going to be looking at how we can, how we can even learn from people that um, we wouldn't necessarily, we would tend to ignore, we tend to get defensive. And yet we can learn from them as well. But there are some voices that we don't want to listen to. The Bible says, be careful about that. Here's, here's some. Proverbs 17, 4 says, A wicked man listens to evil lips. A liar pays attention to malicious talk. And so here, gossip and slander, he goes, you shouldn't be listening to that. The minute somebody starts talking about somebody negatively, you, an alarm should go off. Like, uh, I probably shouldn't be listening to that. And just say, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to. And you can just say it. I'm not going to listen to it. You just Or walk away or do what you need to do. But Danger should go off when you start hearing malicious talk, evil lips. God says that self-proclaimed truth tellers, prophets of our time, maybe they're on TV or whatever, but you don't listen to that. Jeremiah 23 says, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Do not listen to what the prophets are saying to you. They fill you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. So there's some people that claim to have the truth, claim to have the, 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 uh, uh, the, the, the thing that you should be listening to, they have a perspective reality that, that they're saying this is, it's, it's, it's contrary to God's word, but they say, no, no, this is, this is what, what truth is. And he says, you shouldn't be listening to that. You should say, oh, I'm not going to listen to that. That stuff's not good for me. It's kind of like junk food for the mind. You know, you just, I, I don't want that kind of junk food. Now, certainly you have to listen to things in order to discern between truth and false. But once you start to f- see it, oh, that's, that's not true. That doesn't line up with scripture. Then you say, well, I'm, that's junk food for the mind. I'm not going to partake in that mental diet. Second Timothy 2.14 says, keep reminding them of these things. Warn them before God against quarreling about words. It is of no value and only ruins those who listen. And so there, again, just these, these arguments that go nowhere, quarreling, as he says, just the things that just break down relationships. They don't build up people. He says, don't get involved in that. Don't be part of that. Now, the Bible says, above and beyond all things that God listens. He listens to us. He cares what we have to say. And so he hears us. God hears us. Has, you know, when you say to somebody, I hear you, right? You've said that. That's a, a, uh, an idiom we use. And what it means is I'm not just hearing your words, but I am hearing you. 
I get what you're saying, right? We might say, I feel you. I feel you. We're saying, I'm getting all of it. And God feels us. He, he not only hears our words when we pray them verbally, but he even, he gets it. He, he knows what we're thinking. He knows what we're feeling. He's, he feels us. He gets us. And uh, so we see this all throughout the Bible. Psalm 116 verses 1 and 2 says, I love the Lord for he heard my voice. He heard me cry for mercy because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. This is a great, a great verse. He says, I love the Lord. Why? Because he, heard, he hears me. He listens to me. Don't you like it when somebody listens to you? you? You know, I love it. It's one of the reasons I love about Sharon is she listens to me. Not everybody listens to me, <laughs> you know, but she will. And if you know Sharon, she listens to you as well. I and mean, she's, she's a good listener. Right? I mean, she's, she listens with her ears. She listens with her heart. She has little spidey senses. She listens with those. And, you know, I, 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 love, I love her for that. I actually have a hard time listening, you know, mainly because I'm just a selfish pig. No, there's, <laughs> there's some truth to that probably. But no, the reason I have a hard time listening is because I, I, um, I have an intent. You know, I just, I get, I start thinking about other things. I'm kind of an activist, a doer. I have a hard time sometimes just being in the present. I'm thinking about what's coming. You know, I, I'm thinking, oh, well, the next meeting I have, the next conversation that's coming, and instead of just being in the moment, that's, that's a challenge for me. It's a challenge for me in prayer as well. It's not just with people. If you're, if you're a good listener, you, you bring that, to, you bring that, that skill set everywhere you go, including your, your prayer experience. And you pray. And being a good listener is important. Now, God is a good listener. He, and, he, and, the, and the psalmist says, I love him for that. I love God because he hears me. You know, this older translation for this verse says, he inclined his ear to me. He inclined, what does that mean? Well, it means that you, 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 you go towards that person. I was thinking of uh, when my kids were little. Here's a little picture of them. They were one, one, three, and four. Very, very close together. I love, you know, kids at this age are awesome. But they're also, three boys were very rambunctious. A lot of energy. There's a lot of noise in our house. But from time to time, they would quiet down. They'd come, you know, one of them would come up to me and say, Dad, I want to tell you something. Now, you know what I would do? Like any parent, I would just, I'd, I'd bend down, listen. Yeah, what do you want to say? And then they would smile and they'd whisper something into my ear. What am I doing when I'm doing that? I'm inclining my ear. I want to hear. I want to hear from you. What do you, what do you, what's on your heart? What are you thinking? What do you want to say? God does that. That's the picture that we should have. When, he, when, when, you're, when you want to say something to him, he inclines his ear. And the psalmist says, I love God for that. I love that he comes close to me. Then the New Living Translation says, he bends down to listen. Now, Jeremiah 29 says, for I, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Then verse 12, then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Now, this is a famous verse, but the context here is that the people of God, they're in exile. Israel's in exile in Babylon, and they're longing to go back to their homeland. God promises them. He says, this is, a, this is what's going to happen. I have a good plan for you. You are going to be restored back to your homeland. It's a good plan. And then he says, but it's more than that. I not only bring you, want to bring you back to your homeland, I want to have this close relationship with you where you, we're talking and you're listening and we're listening to one another and I'm hearing you and, and there's this, this ongoing relationship. He goes, that's what he's calling us to. He says, I want this kind of relationship. Now, Micah 7, 7 says, but as for me, I watch and hope for the Lord. I wait for God, my Savior. My God will hear me. And notice the confidence that's coming from me. He goes, I know God hears me. I know that God hears me. And he does, even when we don't feel like we're hearing from him. The confidence is, I know he hears me. I know he hears me. I heard this story of, from Dan Lynch, the pastor of Real Life Ministries. And he was talking about uh, back when he was a cop in San Francisco. He's a beat cop. 
and just walking in the neighborhoods. He said he loved it. It was the, it was the greatest job because he just got to meet people and, and walk around outside. It was beautiful weather and he got free food. Everybody was feeding him. And, and, and then they strapped him with a radio and he didn't like that. And he goes, you know, so he, he decided, I'm, I'm going to just drop my, drop my radio by accident, you know, and, and he broke it. He thought it's rattling now and it didn't work. So he thought that's perfect. So he's kind of the same way, you know, he went back to the way it was. And a few hours later, some guy takes a shot at him, shoots a gun at him and, and runs down an alley. He knows the territory, so he, he knows it's a dead end. So he's going to run in there to make an arrest. And then right when he does that, a car pulls up, blocks the alleyway. Two guys get out and start shooting at him. Now he realizes it's like an ambush. So he falls into this gutter area and he's trying to make himself small. He's shooting out. And then he calls on his, and then he realizes he's got his broken radio. But kind of in desperation, he starts yelling, you know, he's screaming for help. And within just a few seconds, he hears the sirens, music to his ears. And next thing he knows, the place is swarming with cops. They arrest him and, and, and he goes up to him. He goes, how did you guys know I was in need? He goes, well, you're, we just heard you in your radio screaming like a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> When he dropped it, he broke, he, 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 he broke the receiver, but he didn't break the transmitter. Even though he couldn't hear and he was cut off, they could hear him. And that's what it's like with God. When we, God hears us. Sometimes for different reasons, we feel disconnected. Our, our receiver's broken, but God still hears us. He hears what, and, he, and, he, and he answers our prayers. Now, God hears our prayers. And we see this throughout the Bible. Over and over, God hears the prayers of his people. God telling people, I hear your prayers. For example, with Rachel, and with, she was married to Jacob. And she had a prayer to have a child. And, uh, and she did. God answered her prayer in Genesis 30, 22. He listened to her and opened up her womb. In 1 Kings 8, 9, these aren't on your outline, but just real quick summary. Solomon goes to, uh, the, he builds the temple. He prays out loud. He says, God, I want you to come and visit this temple in a powerful way, your presence to be here. And God did. His, his, his presence came in a powerful way. In 2 Kings 19 is the story of King Hezekiah. He is surrounded by the Assyrian army. They're knocking on the door. They're going to come in and destroy them. And he cries out, he prays, and God in the 11th hour protects them. And then in the New Testament, you have Zachariah and little Elizabeth who were in their elder age, had no kids, and they were praying, and God gave them John the Baptist. And then in Acts 10, you have the prayer of Cornelius. He's a Gentile. And, uh, and then uh, the, uh, an angel comes to him and says, God has heard your prayer. That's what he says. See, God's listening to Cornelius. He's a Gentile. He's kind of outside of the circle of their faith at that time. And he comes, God heard your prayer. And he ends up becoming the first, first Gentile convert that's recorded in, in, in the Bible. God hears our prayers. Now, that is a good thing, to know God hears our prayers. In fact, it, it can be kind of something that you have to think through. One time I was, um, not too long ago, somebody asked me, they said, you know, I'm, I'm thinking I want to move. And so I need a new job. I need a new house. And, all. and well, this is a good friend of mine. And I didn't, you know, so I just thought, well, okay. That's what friends do, right? They pray for each other. So I, I wrote it down in my prayer journal. I said, okay, I'll pray for you. Then the next day, I found myself really struggling with that prayer. I thought, I don't want to pray that prayer. How do, why did I commit to pray to this guy's going to leave? He, I like him here. I don't want him to leave, you know? And, and so that actually, a big part of my prayer life was just wrestling over, should I even be praying for it? And then I, I knew I had to, so I would kind of, but I knew, see, I knew God would answer my prayer. And I, was, I thought, well, I don't want that. You know, have you ever been in that situation where you have to kind of think through, you know, sometimes what you're praying because God does answer prayer. So that's a good news, bad news thing, I guess. He did end up leaving and, uh, and that prayer got answered. But uh, that's, that's part of the way things are. You know, now sometimes people will say, well, what if God, what if uh, I'm not really that righteous? You know, I'm not uh, maybe I'm not living a life that's honorable. Will God still answer my prayer? Well, sin can get in the way, but God always makes a way. He always says, you know what? There's always a way to, to get past that through, through repentance, through changing our mind. Notice in Psalm 66, he says, if I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened, but God has surely listened and heard my voice in prayer. And so when we confess 
When we kind of just get a clean slate, we say, God, you know what, I, you know, I, I'm sorry and I, I, please forgive me. God comes and he forgives. He brings his power of love and forgiveness into our life and grace. First John 5 says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we will have asked, we know that we have what we have asked him. And so uh, here he's saying that we ask according to his will. Now, sometimes that blocks people because they think, well, I'm not sure exactly what God wants. So, so they end up not praying at all. They're kind of like paralyzed. Well, what if this isn't God's will? So maybe I shouldn't pray. And then they just, they get locked up. But the way I like to look at it is, is that I like to see, I, I believe God wants to give us good things, right? The Bible says that. God is the, is the giver of all good gifts. And Jesus reinforces that. He says, you know what? As human parents, you know how to give good gifts to your kids. And you're not nearly as good as God. God certainly knows how to give good things. And so we just see this, that God has a passion to care for you, to give you good things. And so I like to just pray like that. God, I just, I'm just going to pray and, and, and let you sort it out. But I'm going to pray with confidence for what I'm praying for. Some of you are grandparents and you know that when your grandkids come and, and visit you and maybe you have like a candy jar, some M&Ms and they come up and they go, hey, you know, grandpa, can I have some M&Ms? Grandma, can I have some M&Ms, right? And, and they're, 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 they're not gonna, they don't wanna know all of the things that go behind it. They just, and your job is just to give them M&Ms, right? Here you go. Now you have to figure out if their parents are okay with it, but the kids, they're not interested in that. They'll, you, you know, they'll just let grandpa and grandma, they just, they just kind of just, I just want to, you know, I want a donut, I want an M&M or whatever. And you're just, your job is just to give out delicious food, right? <laughs> Here you go. So let God figure all that out. You just go and just say, just hold out your hand and say, God, this is, I just, this is what I want, you know? And you just kind of just go to God with confidence and believing that he cares about you. Here's another thing is God hears our cries. Now, this is different in seemingly in the, in the Bible because there seems to be just like prayers and then there's cries of the heart. Now, you know what this is, something that you really want. You, you, you want so desperately, it like if you were to cut, it would like bleed some of that. You know what I mean? This, you want a cry of the heart. And the Bible talks about God caring about people that are in trouble or in grief or in pain, or in despair. When we go to God and we say, God, help me. God, save me. Here's a few verses. 2 Samuel 22, 7 says, In my distress, I called to the Lord. I called out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came to his ears. Psalm 6, 9. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. Psalm 10. You hear, O Lord, the desire of of the afflicted. You encourage them and you listen to their cry. And then Psalm twenty two twenty four, For he has not despised or disdained the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. Now, a cry is sometimes something we can't even say. You know, we don't even know how to put words to it. Hey, have you ever just come in, and maybe this was you this weekend, but where you just come in to the, week, to the weekend service, and you can barely engage? You, you have some, some distress going on so deeply inside your soul that when the songs are going on, you're listening, and, and, and you're just, you're, you can't even maybe even sing them, but they're, they're, they're true. I mean, you're, you're wanting them to be true. You're kind of, they're your prayer, but you don't even have the energy to sing them. You're just... There, just listening. That's a cry. That's a cry of your heart. When you're just in a, such a tender place that sometimes you can't, and it's not necessarily crying like with tears. It can be certainly, but it's the cry that is visceral down in your gut, down in your soul, in your, in your bones. Oh God, I need this. Oh God, come through for me. God says, those are special prayers. Those are, he goes, he really comes to the aid of those who cry with that in their heart, with, with a cry, when they're crying, God, help me, help me. And that's good news. God also hears our complaints. That may not be good news. 
You know, I mean, we, it's a good thing that God hears everything, but God, because God hears everything, he also hears our whining and our complaining because he is always listening to us. A good example of this is the Israelites in uh, the book of Exodus, in the book of Numbers. They were in 400 years of slavery. Maybe they got uh, into the bad habit of complaining in that. It's understandable, but they get uh, they get delivered through 10 plagues, God's sovereign deliverance through the Red Sea. They're, they're, they're headed to the promised land and they fall into this complaining thing. God's providing for them and they're complaining about the food. They're complaining about the water. Now, granted, it's a limited diet. It's mostly manna. In fact, it's all manna. So they're having manna pancakes for breakfast. They're having manna sandwiches for lunch. They're having manna casserole for dinner. They're having banana, banana bread for dessert and they're just saying you know it's nutritious it's tasty but they're going I'm done. you know they start complaining and they complain so much Moses and God are they're being driven crazy they're going you know and it's not a good thing and so we need to be careful about this complaining that we can fall into complaining that is so common around us but we're not supposed to fall into that and so next time you're tempted to complain about your food, just think, I have food. There's a lot of people who don't have food. Or you complain about your job, you have a job. There's pl plenty of people that would love to have your problem. Or next time you complain about a sermon that you heard. <laughs> just thought I'd throw that in there. But, <laughs> you know, just, you, you have to think through, hey, you know, maybe I shouldn't be complaining. Because why? Because God is listening. You know, sometimes we, we talk differently when somebody else is in the room. Especially if we're talking about them, right? You know, oh, you're here. What did I say again? You know, it, sometimes I'll actually mentally put somebody in, in the room if, if I'm talking about somebody. I don't think, I want to make sure anything I would have said, I would be okay if they were here listening to me. Otherwise, I probably shouldn't be saying it. And then lastly, the Bible says that sometimes because God is so concerned about our relationship that there is a break. There can be a break in our relationship. God won't listen when we refuse to listen to him. He's talking about relationships there. In, in Zechariah, for example, he says, they made their hearts as hard as flint and would not listen to the law or to the words that the Lord Almighty had sent by his spirit through his earlier prophets. So the Lord Almighty was very angry. When I called, they did not listen. So when they called, I would not listen, says the Lord Almighty. And so here the Israelites were just saying, I'm not interested in God. And God had, had given his covenant. They go, we're not interested. He sent prophets and they said, we're not. Sometimes they even killed them. They said, we don't want to hear from God. And so there's this break in the relationship. Break in a covenant. And so God's, there's this, this break. And so God's saying, you know what? You need to get things dip, going. You need to get things going on different in your life. You need to make some changes. And he calls them to re repentance. But ultimately, see, this is not just like a childish thing. Well, you're not going to listen to me. I'm not going to listen to you. You know, some petulant attitude of a child. You know, and no, it's, it's, there's a break in the relationship. And until that gets resolved, there's a problem here. So that God says, that's important. And so we need to make sure and do our part. And okay, what, what do I'm going to do? I'm not going to be perfect, certainly, but I need to make sure and not be resistant to what God wants to say to me. I love this verse, this last verse I put on your outline. Second Chronicles 7, 14, it says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, so there's this response that we need to do, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. So there's three terrific promises that God gives us. God gives you, he says, this is, this is the response we come to God, we come in humility. Humility means that I don't have it all together, that I don't know how to do it. And, and no matter where you are on your spectrum of, of your ability to listen to God, everybody here can get better. I certainly can. And so humility is posturing yourself saying, you know what, I need to maybe, maybe listen a little more. Maybe in your prayer time, you're kind of like that video clip I showed where you allow distractions to get in between you and God. And God, it's, you expect him to understand, you know, I mean, and, 
And he is gracious, but it, it makes the relationship not go very good. It makes it where you, he, you don't hear from him and he, you know, this thing's, this relationship's breaking down. And so he says, here's what I want you to do. Come humbly, seek my face. And then come to God and say, God, I, I'm going to turn from the things that disappoint you, that, that displease you and move towards God. And then he says, in response, he goes, I'm going to hear from heaven for you. I'm going to hear from heaven. I'm going to forgive your sin. And I'm going to heal your land. Would you stand with me and let's close in prayer. If our prayer teams, you can come on up. And uh, while I'm praying, if you, maybe you have something going on in your life. Maybe you have a cry of your heart. We would I'd count it a great honor and a privilege for you to come up. And we'd agree with you in prayer. But let's pray and go before God right now. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you made the first move. You initiated that relationship. It came towards us. So, Lord, I pray for soft hearts and open ears right now. I think of that verse where it says, lead with your ears. Some of you are in positions in your home or in your, in, your, uh, in your work where you're leading. And God would say, lead with your ears. Lead by listening. And in your relationships, lead by listening. And in your relationship with God, Begin by listening instead of just launching into something you want to say, which I do too. We all do that. Take a moment and just make that part of your prayer experience where you lead by listening. Well, God, we just come and we say, give us discernment on listening, how, what to listen to and what not to listen to. Help us not to have a diet of mental junk food, stuff that we have no business listening to. And Lord, I pray for each person here who can't pray, doesn't feel, their, their cry is an unspoken one. It's heartfelt. It's in their soul. Lord, I pray that you come and you move on their behalf. I know you say you do. You see, you draw to the, you're just drawn to the afflicted, those who are in a place of grief or despair. If that is you this morning, God says he cares about you. And so, Lord, I just pray, comfort them. Bring your power. Bring your presence. Bring the community of faith to come and encourage them. Lord, I also pray that you help us to be discerning of our complaints, how we talk about things, that we first world problems for most of us. But yet you take it seriously. So Lord, help us to continually, uh, like, a, like a gardener, where they are always pruning. We never put down our pruning, our pruning tools and, and for complaining. When we see it, we clip it off. We take, no, I'm not going to put that. I'm not going to entertain that complaint. I'm not going to entertain that. And if you feel distant from God, today God calls you to come seek him. Turn from the ways that dishonor him. If you've never put your faith in Christ, why not do that? Say, Jesus Christ, I want to put my faith in you today. I want to follow you, God. Forgive me. I'm going to, with your power, I'm going to turn from doing things my own way. And I want to do things your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening to this week's message. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't hesitate to write us your story at amen at And we'll see you next week.